experienced in their life. Whereas in the Christian perspective, these prophets that we've been talked about are not revered at the level that we revere them. They are referred to as great men of God. But in the Christian perspective, predominantly we focus on the greatness of Jesus Christ. Two of the most revered figures in Islam are the Virgin Mary and her son Jesus. May God's peace be upon them both. Muslims believe that Jesus was chosen by God to redirect his people to the worship of God through love, compassion, and service. Muslims believe that Jesus was born miraculously without male intervention. The virgin birth is clearly confirmed in the Quran. The Muslim holy book, the Quran, tells us, O oh Mary, God gives you glad tidings of a word from him. Whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, honored in this world and in the hereafter, and one of those brought near to God. He shall speak to the people in infancy and in old age, and shall be of the righteous. She said, O oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? He said, Even so. God creates what he wills. When he decrees a thing, he says to it, be, and it is. Mary is mentioned more times in the Quran, the Islamic revelation, than she is even in the Gospels. And she is deemed a perfect woman. If you compare Islamic belief about Jesus and God to the earliest Christians, then you can hardly tell a difference. It's also interesting that in some of the ancient inscriptions that go back to the first Christian community of the first century that are in Arabia, they refer to themselves as Muslims. They, word the, they use the word in Aramaic or Nabataean, Muslimo. Muslims are taught in the Quran to reach out to people of all faiths and in particular to recipients of earlier revelations. Say, O oh people of the scriptures, let us come together on a fair and noble principle common to both of us, neither to worship or serve any but God, never to associate any being with Him, and to never take one another as lords besides God. The relationship with Islam, I think there is a similarity uh, of understanding in terms of the, the theological understanding that Jesus uh, came as gift from God, as um, a teller of the truth, as promised one, and so um, the understanding of uh, Mary, um, a young virgin, a young woman who faithfully responds to God's call uh, to receive this blessing and to give birth to Jesus, uh, and an honoring of Mary, an honoring of of her faithfulness, um, I think uh, is uh, the same in Christianity and Islam. Muslims believe that Jesus, or Isa, peace be upon him, was a mighty messenger of God. We believe that in the case of Jesus, a miraculous set of events happened. His mother, Miriam, or Mary, may Allah be pleased with her, was a virgin woman and the angel Gabriel came to her and informed her she would have a son and Allah breathed his word and his spirit into her and she conceived Jesus with no father. From there Jesus spoke from the cradle. His life was a set of miracles and he completed his mission. He gave the teachings of one God but he never changed the laws of Moses and he basically came to teach the children of Israel and we are taught that before the crucifixion he was raised. And Muslims believe that before the Day of Judgment, he will return in order to die on earth and to have a family. And he will be a righteous ruler, living by the Quran, the book of scriptures of the Muslims, the final testament to humanity. Muslims believe that Jesus predicted the arrival of a final prophet to succeed him. This prophet would continue Christ's message of peace and love through the common worship of one God. Muhammad was that prophet. Jesus talked about the paraclete. He is the faraqlit in Arabic. 
the intercessor, which is the meaning of Parakletos, and that's the name of the Prophet Muhammad, is Muhammad al Shafi'a, Muhammad the intercessor. So he is the intercessor. He is the one that Jesus said would come after him in John 16, which is traditionally translated as the Holy Spirit. I and mean, that's how that it's been understood by Christians, but Muslims have always understood it. And that's why in Aramaic, the word Muhammad, which the, is the Aramaic word for the paraclete, was so close to Muhammad that many of the Syriac Christians who knew Aramaic actually embraced Islam. Muhammad was born in Mecca in the year 570. He was a direct descendant of Ishmael, the eldest son of Abraham. Muhammad was orphaned at a young age. He tended sheep in his youth, and as he grew older, he became known for his truthfulness, generosity, wisdom, and sincerity. Muhammad lived among people who had forgotten the path of their forefather Abraham. They worshiped idols killed their infant daughters and were corrupt to an extreme. Muslims believe that God sent Muhammad as a messenger to them and to all of humanity. Muhammad shared God's message with his people. With the exception of a few, most of the people of Mecca rejected his call to worship one God. Muhammad and his followers became the subjects of bitter persecution. When the situation became intolerable, Muhammad sent some of his followers to seek refuge with the Christian king of Abyssinia, a good and wise man known for his faith and justice. There, among the Christians, and for the first time in history, Muslims found peace and the freedom to practice Islam openly. What is significant about this is that really it is the first interfaith coming together um, between the Arabian Peninsula and the African continent. And so the, the, the prophet of Islam, the final prophet of Islam, sends his followers to an African Christian king. And a perfect blending comes about. People who are tortured and oppressed are given sanctuary by a believer in God. In 622, God gave the Muslim community the command to migrate to the city of Medina. Here, under the Prophet's inspired leadership, the Muslim community continued to grow and prosper till the whole of Arabia, including the people of Mecca, accepted Islam. Muhammad ibn Abdullah, peace be upon him, was the last of a long series of prophets. In terms of his family, uh, he is a direct descendant of the Prophet Abraham, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, uh, from his son Ishmael, on the side of Hagar or Haja. And he was born in Mecca, and um, he lived the life uh, of, of a Meccan person, an average Meccan person. He, he was a shepherd um, when he was young, and at the age of 40, uh, he received revelation from the angel Gabriel, and followed basically the, the same system of monotheism and um, the golden rule and living a good life that, that all of the prophets of monotheism have followed. What distinguishes him from the other prophets is that he was not sent only to his people but he was sent to the whole of humanity and he is the seal of the prophets he is the finality and uh, Muslims believe that he is the last prophet and there will be no other prophet after him at the age of 63 prophet Muhammad died leaving behind the foundations for a community established on righteousness, peace, and equality of all people. Muslims believe that God's revealed teachings have been preserved for mankind in a succession of holy books. These books include the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. The Quran, according to Muslims, is the very word of God Almighty a complete record of the exact words revealed by God through the Archangel Gabriel to Prophet Muhammad over 1400 years ago. The Quran 
is the principal source of every Muslim's faith and practice. But its basic theme is the relationship between God and his creatures. My understanding of the Quran is that it is the word of God for the people of Islam. Uh, just as uh, the Hebrew scriptures uh, are the word of God for the Jewish community, Christian scriptures are word of God for the Christian community. I believe there are numbers of sacred texts in the world and, uh, and honor and revere the Quran as one of those sacred texts. We like the Quran very much and we consider it sort of another book of the New Testament because it seems to be repeating everything in its more pure form. We feel when we read the Quran that it's confirming our beliefs. If I had a, a captive audience of my fellow Americans, what I'd like to say to them about Islam is, do you realize what a wonderful treasure you have in your midst in terms of its history, in terms of its vision of God, in terms of its social understanding of how society should work, in its vision of justice and mercy. Here we have an opportunity to learn and embrace a tradition which has so much to teach us and uh, from which we have nothing to fear. Uh, so let's do it. There is more in common between Jews, Christians, and Muslims than is different. Yet in today's world, the followers of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad are frequently fighting one another rather than engaging one another in a common search for truth. There is only one God, and we, all of humanity, are created by this same God for one purpose to know and worship Him. So let us live as our great faiths command us to, with mutual love and respect for one another, for all of creation and for our Creator. We must move far beyond tolerance. Um, tolerance is, a, is, is yesterday's term. Our call is to move far beyond that to um, acceptance, respect, uh, trust, building of a relationship of community as sisters and brothers. We need to not see this, um, this deep separation between uh, Islam and Christianity, uh, but rather recognize the places where we're similar, celebrate those, work together on those, and, and respect and value the places where we differ. There are over 8 million American Muslims worshiping God in over 5,000 mosques and centers across the U.S. We invite you to stop by one of these mosques and honor us with your presence. Perhaps we can share a prayer together. Salam and peace be with you all.